Buongiorno a tutti. Siamo online. We are online. And you're eating. Ok. Finalmente, dopo tanto parlare, dopo tante peripezie, siamo qui all'Internet Governance Forum come remote hub. Scusate. Quindi, questa è la prima giornata, iniziamo con i nostri speaker, che poi si potrà anche partecipare, e assistere al, mh, agli eventi qui a Katowice. Ricordiamo che oggi è il primo giorno e fira il 10 e abbiamo eh, il nostro moderatore, Alessandro Benvenu. E iniziamo, le, mh, lascio a lui la parola e mi tolgo dalle scatole. E grazie Sebastian, ben arrivato. Welcome everyone. Thank you for attending this panel. I'm your host for the next five days for the remote app in International Governance Forum presented by ESDC. Our first speaker is Sebastian from RightChain. He is a, a director in RightChain Limited and a, a data intellectual property specialist. And he's going to talk to us about Uh, user generated content uh, in uh, the era of a uh, uh, distributed uh, platform and uh, social media. So I'm uh, leaving you your space for your speech. I'm adding your presentation. Thank you. And so Hello, everyone. Thank great. you for, uh, for attending this panel. And uh, the topic uh, I would like to, to present today is uh, the copyright in the digital era and, the, and what is going on, on the, within the digital distribution of digital contents and the, the use of digital platforms. So one of the first topics uh, I wanted to, uh, to introduce is the concept of the digital content. What is a digital content? Everyone is talking about digital content, but there is no currently a strong definition about uh, what it is. So basically, uh, digital content is anything that can be represented by uh, an inf a, a sequence of information of uh, uh, stored on a specific digital device. Uh, this can be any computer, any server, smartphone, uh, actually anything uh, that we currently use uh, on daily basis and uh, is stored a uh, usually is stored as a file so we can have documents we can have videos pictures uh, illustrations we can have uh, emails uh, all of these can be represented physically uh, within a, a system we, uh, as a file But this file uh, can also be uh, digital content can also be streamed so we are more and more using uh, um, streaming uh, services like uh, Netflix, like uh, Amazon Prime Video, uh, anything that we, uh, Spotify, for example, for music, uh, we use uh, social media, we use messaging platforms, email platforms. All of this is a digital asset. It is a digital content. So digital content is pretty handy. It can be used in uh, different forms. It can be Uh, transferred uh, using these different devices we can uh, we can copy information we can uh, we can technically handle it uh, very efficiently and we can uh, uh, provide massive amount of informations to to our peers uh, using uh, uh, minimum effort uh, and uh, doing it extremely rapidly So data can be easily copied. Uh, it can be, we can have exact copies of our document uh, in, in a matter of seconds. We can share this information. We can edit uh, in a simple way. We can uh, also lose the information. So we can lose files. The files can be damaged. Uh, the files can be stolen. Um, recently, we've seen that uh, plenty of information, uh, plenty of companies have been uh, attacked using ransomware and other uh, 
other forms of attack, uh, this kind of information can be also be stolen. So we can have uh, our access to this data uh, inhibited. So um, when creating a uh, this blank, this is intentionally blank. Um, when we create a digital file, uh, we have only one moment when we can uh, stamp it and uh, give uh, a identity to this file. And this moment is when the file is created. Once the file is shared uh, to someone or published on a digital platform, uh, this content becomes available to anyone and it can spread uh, slowly based on uh, our on the platform chosen or it can be and become viral and go spread across the world in, in a, a matter of seconds. So uh, we are really used to digital platforms. Uh, we are uh, using uh, it to access videos, uh, to share videos. Uh, we've been, we've seen uh, new platforms coming uh, on, uh, coming to to the market, uh, and uh, get a massive amount of subscribers in a really short time. What are the numbers of these social media platforms? Uh, this is a statistic from 2017, uh, and uh, we have uh, on a hourly basis uh, a massive amount of uh, contents. So digital social media platforms are uh, creative, creating incredible amount of contents, uh, and this amount of contents have to be handled. One of the... Uh, main issues about digital content is the ownership of this content. So we have uh, an, a rising amount of copyright infringement uh, requests. Uh, Google in 2012 uh, just faced uh, 2 million link uh, uh, takedowns uh, removal requests for copyright infringement. These uh, of which we, in which uh, digital data can be, uh, can be accessed and copied, uh, allows uh, also allows uh, the uh, abuse of this kind of information uh, by uh, creating uh, fake posts uh, stealing information posting uh, reposting the information as uh, as your own you can just download a file from google images for example post it online and say it was yours uh, protecting this kind of uh, information and ownership becomes uh, a real challenge this phenomenon has been increasing uh, year by year, um, and uh, it's become one of the major issues uh, among the, the social media platforms and digital platforms. So um, the copyright law currently in, uh, in use, uh, in the main copyright law in use is the DMCA at, uh, in uh, the United States, since most of the platforms we use to the, on a daily basis are based in the United States. And uh, the main principle of the uh, copyright publishing or publishing on uh, any scale is follows the first used principle, meaning uh, the first time one uh, a work is being used, presented to the public or uh, or just being uh, um, or just being published using any of the platforms mentioned earlier. So what happens now is uh, someone, a content creator, creates an original content, posts it online. Uh, this content may be liked. Uh, it can be shared. Uh, so an ori the original link to this content is uh, maintained, and uh, the end user uh, can access uh, the information on who is the original author. Um, among the time, uh, more and more uh, reposting uh, phenomenon is appearing, uh, meaning that someone is just getting the content from someone else, posting is posting it as its own uh, its own content, and then it uh, uh, the process starts from scratch. So the content can be reposted, reshared, and the attribution this time comes to the reposting user rather than the original author. Of course, this brings uh, many issues uh, to the author uh, in first place, uh, the violation of uh, the moral principles uh, of the author of being attributed as the original author, as well as uh, economical damage uh, should the author lose uh, the capability of uh, uh, having any kind of income from his work or her work. 
uh, should this not be uh, usually uh, this is something that we've been observing uh, during last time is that is also that uh, uh, often the reposting uh, uh, channels uh, have much more visibility rather than the author's posts so this brings even more issues uh, to uh, to the phenomenon what happens uh, by following the first per use uh, rule? What happens if the original author gets uh, his content or her content uh, removed by a platform? Uh, this can happen, and uh, this actually happens uh, in what we call the in copyright infringement attacks or basically copyright trolling. One or more people just uh, more, uh, submit a copyright infringement uh, on the original artwork, uh, the platform takes down the original artwork. The consequence of this act is that all the shared posts lose their, uh, their visibility. They are not more, no more available. There is no more the uh, link to the original artwork and the original author. What happens? What can happen then? And what been uh, what we've been seeing observed uh, in the past years uh, is that uh, we lose also the track of the original time of uh, first use. So when was this this work uh, be? When was this work uh, really being used for the first time? Following this scheme and this example on the screen, uh, the first use is of the repost. So someone can efficiently and actually uh, can have his own the, the stolen artwork being attributed to himself or herself. This is an issue and uh, the uh, major platforms currently used to share content are fighting with and the fight usually is uh, the takedown of the infringing content but giving the evidence of what is the original source of the content is still uh, um, is still something handled at the own fashion. So uh, the original author must provide information about uh, who created the content, uh, that he owns uh, the rights on that content, and that's not always uh, really simple to achieve. So uh, we're currently holding a, a survey online on uh, on our platform and on our website we are asking content creators to provide us insights on their use of social media as we can see in this slide uh, more than 86 percent of uh, content creators we've been surveying so far is using instagram followed by twitter uh, facebook uh, artstation and pixiv are more uh, for uh, illustrators and content creators in visual graphics but as we can see three of the three uh, actually two of the major platforms uh, currently being used on uh, on the internet are both uh, um, meta instagram by meta and uh, twitter within our survey we asked uh, uh, are the content creators to let us know if their work has been ever stolen and the answer is uh, in a vast majority of times yes the work was stolen what kind of stores uh, what kind of theft was that what kind of appropriation the majority of the answers was uh, the reposting so the problem of the reposting of uh, the content is a an actual issue for content creators and their uh, and their uh, potential income, their visibility, their own uh, moral rights. Um, other mis other misuses of uh, their work uh, are uh, repost uh, within reposting is using the content uh, for merchandise, uh, personal appropriation, using the content for uh, participation to um contests uh, and uh, other uh, access to uh, uh, using it as a, your own portfolio to access other works uh, so the issue happens to be a real problem so let's turn the all of this in uh, into numbers for the U uh, european union alone 45 percent of the economical activity is a uh, directly act uh, can be directly attributed to the inter in, uh, intellectual property industry 
with a value of uh, 6.6 trillion of euros this is how much the uh, how much the creativity how much the innovation is worth in the europe alone if we extend this to the global scale the num the numbers are absolutely uh, enormous so uh, what is the point of uh, this uh, digital uh, digital moment how what should we do to better manage the uh, the digital assets and the intellectual property in the form uh, rep represented in a digital asset first of all in our opinion it is to better understand the digital assets uh, what they are how what they behave how they behave and what can happen to them uh, there is a need of a new paradigm from data management. So how data should be managed, how data should be shared, what kind of mechanisms we can use to prevent data from being stolen or from being uh, attributed erroneously to someone else. Uh, we brought the example of the copyright uh, so applied to content creativity but within the company and the enterprise environments, the intellectual property can be a trade secret. So the appropriation of trade secrets or patents is a real thing that happens on a daily basis. We, we are seeing a massive amount of startups growing and burning and uh, getting alive every day. They have a massive amount of intellectual property and uh, they need to protect it if they want to uh, survive and to make a difference on the market. So they need to understand absolutely how the digital assets work and how to manage the data for their own sake. Understanding the value of content, uh, of creative content. Um, social media platforms uh, uh, are basically based on an advertising mod business model, meaning that the more content they have to share, the more income they can generate through their advertising and they they essentially are working on uh, the content that someone else create so having users being damaged by the misuse or abuse of the platform is actually a long-term damage to the content platform itself uh, provide more support to content creators for example there should be something that uh, is uh, um, something that the platform it should be uh, accountable for uh, the fact that the platform takes down a specific content does not really solve uh, the issue of uh, the content creator it actually can damage even more the content creator rather than uh, rather than uh, helping him or her in uh, the specific situation Provide a more efficient copyright infringement procedure. Today, the copyright infringement procedure are out, mostly are automated. Uh, this is reasonable since uh, the contents, uh, the amount of content created every day is so vast that it has to be automated to a some level. But uh, just the idea of having uh, from unverified sources, uh, and this brings in account uh, another issue, which is the identity of the internet on the internet. So anonymous users can just submit a copyright infringement uh, uh, violation and, their con and the content of the original author is taken down. Um, the, ac the entire account of the user can be taken down for trolling, uh, for abuse, uh, uh, which didn't actually happen. So uh, we've seen uh, content creators being held hostage and asked for ransom for ransoms uh, uh, in order for their accounts to be kept online. So this is an, an issue as well. Of course, uh, this is not uh, uh, an easy path, uh, but uh, we need really to understand that uh, given the time we're living in, the understanding of what is a digital content, how it works, how it behaves, uh, what can be done, uh, especially in the mean way, in the abusing way, is something that is required uh, at this time and we cannot uh, uh, we cannot hide behind uh, behind the idea that uh, in past we used to work uh, in a different way we need to adapt to the times and see that uh, new content creators are those bringing and carrying on the platforms uh, we can we have the 
perfect example, which is TikTok. Uh, in a matter of short time, it gathered a massive amount of users and it produced a completely different way of creating content. And thus, it had its own, uh, its own issues and problems uh, along the way. So um, content has an extremely high value, both uh, for uh, the end user, for the consumer that is trying to find something entertaining. Uh, again, I, we can during this pandemic, we can mention what happened uh, uh, during the lockdowns where the streaming platforms actually had a massive increase of content uh, being consumed. Um, the Amazon Kindle platform had an explosion of its co of its use of uh, digital books uh, and the reading uh, the amount of people reading content. Uh, um, TikTok uh, also other streaming platforms had uh, an increase of use and of content created in order to cope with the with the issues that uh, the lockdowns carried to the users. So the content has a massive volumes, uh, a massive value that is uh, can be counted in billions of uh, uh, dollars on uh, on the monthly basis. So underestimating the value of this content uh, can be a, a serious problem on the short on a long term uh, perspective and it needs to be addressed uh, uh, it should have been addressed uh, years ago and uh, we are already probably late on this but things can still can, can be done and we need just to work on uh, work on the issue from the basics uh, so from the basics so from understanding what's the problem and then trying to find uh, solutions to uh, to the issue which opens uh, uh, with this, uh, I can say I concluded uh, my presentation. Um, from uh, on this, I sh I think I can say that uh, that's worked for you in your leg in the legal frameworks. Thank you very much for your speech, Sebastian. You raise a Thank very you. important issue uh, because between the world of text, uh, of term and condition of. Uh, social yeah. networks platform for sharing video or graphic content uh, the brick of words uh, hide the fact that they are not the more suitable solution uh, to give protection to the content creator you also try to provide a different uh, an alternative uh, way with your company, as I know. Yeah, we've been working on that. Uh, that's our uh, main uh, main business. Uh, truth to be said uh, that the uh, legal frameworks behind each terms and conditions are uh, uh, specifically built to uh, cover the uh, shoulders of the uh, social media platform. So to uh, actually make so the platform is not liable for any kind of infringement uh, and uh, um, this is uh, of course uh, this is reasonable because the content platform needs to provide to uh, to protect itself but uh, it's uh, the the issue is not from my perspective the issue is the lack of attention and the lack uh, and the, perhaps the not uh, uh, giving the right uh, value to what is uh, the copyright infringement issue. So the process of automation of this kind of uh, issues can be a real deal. Thank you very much. Thank uh, you for the time. I advise you to stay with us because uh, at uh, uh, 1 uh, uh, p.m. Central European time, uh, uh, we are going to talk about uh, cybercrime with a duet uh, between a legal counselor and an engineer. So thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you. By the way, uh, Sebastian, you are going to give us your slides to, for sharing. Uh, Absolutely. They can be found in the SDG website uh, after the end of these five days. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.